With the Her Royal Highness gracious permission, I will now address the congregation. The challenge of public health service has expanded in scope beyond just simple medical treatment. It's now encompassed the issue of environmental protection, the issue of making a livelihood possible in difficult areas for a lot of people at the far edge of the society, the issue of making public health service available geographically across the nation, and the very issue that has become the plague of humanity recently is the inequality in every facet of a human life. Case in point, case in point here is uh, Nan province, which is one of the 77 provinces of Thailand. It's in the north, uh, in the same latitude, sorry, it's the same latitude as Chiang Mai. Size, about the state of Connecticut in America. It is a location of the first grade headwater forest. 85% is mountainous, 85% of this province is mountainous forest, which has been calculated to be the origin of 40% of the water mass that flows through in the end Japriya River, through the center plains of Thailand, all the way through Bangkok. So this is not a more small item in the in terms of the, the health of the ecology for Thailand. But in the recent 15 years, we have lost a lot of these national forests. And it looks like this. There's no CG here. To 80%. This is an existential disaster in the making. Historical records have shown that past civilizations have disappeared because of destruction of the environment, being forest, being the river. This has to be treated. The cause is not just simply bandits coming and cutting around, cutting around trees for logs. It's the onslaught of the urge to make economic gains, which is important to sustain human life. Economic interest is the issue that has to be managed. Take a look at this picture again. This is a national forest in Borneo. You can see it's green, but it's not the same green. On the right side is national forest. On the left side, look closely, is palm oil. The battle line is drawn here, or is drawn here in the middle, but if the recent trends has any predictive capacity, we're going to lose this, this national forest. This battle line is going to move to the right for sure. It has happened here in Borneo. It has happened here uh, to some extent in non forest. It has happened in the Amazon for jungle. It's the way of the world at the moment. The economic interests seem to trump everybody. And unless we work to slow that down or even hopefully to reverse that, we, we're going to go into an even bigger trouble in, in, in terms of having a, a good natural environment to live in, which is an important part of being healthy as a human being. How do we do this? Uh, in Nan, the issue is that people have no way to make a living in the forest. And none has been declared first grade kind of forest. Legally and, 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 and ecologically, it should be only trees, big trees grown. But in that case, people have not enough land to work on, to make a living. Now that's a challenge that has not yet been resolved. That has not been bad, but the attempt is being made. But in the end, we have to come to the acceptance. This is not going to go away because just trying to grow trees 
it has to have to come together with the ability to sustain people's livelihood. By this empirical formula here, you can see that the issue of knowledge of capitalistic system has to come into play. We have to be able to allow people to make a living, but at the same time being able to save the forest, not to cut down everything. So it has to be explored under big trees, which non-forest is the case. What kind of agriculture can be acceptable? But in whatever it is that we choose, we have to go by this empirical formula. We have to select crops that has a real market value. We have to be able to cultivate, to grow that meaningfully with all the fact, uh, the assistance, uh, the, 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 the supporting system, the genetics, the, high, the, the irrigation, uh, the technology to make that into a reasonably valuable product that can sell profitably in the marketplace. Profit in itself is not good or bad, it's just part of a human life. But it has to be done with the consideration that in the end, all get a piece of that. The people in the whole throughout the production, the value chain of the production and the forest must also be safe. In the end, the formula is very clear in the bottom box. If the earnings is not enough to keep the living, the livelihood, then either you go to the state for price guarantee, which is not something that's very sustainable actually, not recommendable, or you increase the areas of cutting down trees. We have to beat this. We have to do good enough in this kind of battle with the, the, the reality of the world. I have not solved any problem. I've just set out the agenda. I have to find resources, people who know very kinds of knowledge to come in and help to make this something that can be sustainable. Now, about the people living in the, the edge of the society. This is in a cottage up on a mountain, uh, Pukha mountain range in Nan, elevation 1,500 to 2,000 meters. In this picture, there are three generations. The one in the middle kneeling over her daughter is a healthcare cottage officer uh, over his just born daughter. And the grandmother sat in the back, three generations of poverty. And they will still have to contend with whether they have, have food to eat, have a decent health care, and have decent education to give them the young daughter hope for a better life. That will continue to be a challenge for us to help find a way. By the way, this is the, I call it the village healthcare cottage. Little structure here that that, that, that girl works at. Uh, it's in, uh, in the, that area of the, the mountain range. It was burned down a year ago. Now it has been reconstructed with the help of the Rakpa Nan Foundation, which Her Royal Highness has set up specifically to help non profits. There's not much of a medical treatment that could be done here. The knowledge of that girl, uh, uh, that, that, that officer is still very limited. But it's a sign and a signal to the people around here at the far edge of the society, that somebody up there still care. It is an important part in the first step to bridge the sense of inequality. Look at this picture. This is what bridging the gap must entail. Aside from the issues of changing the economic structure, the political structure of that, but the end, in any system in the human world, Somebody is going to win big at the, bottom, at the top, and other people are going to be left behind at the bottom of the heap. So if anything, the people in the upper level, with power, with wealth, with knowledge, must bend over to make sure that the people at the bottom get some attention. Look at this man. He didn't come to here. He didn't have to come here. And there is arid and very poor area of Thailand somewhere. But he did. Stop out, came on the car, 
bent over to ask the poor farmer and his young son whether he had enough to eat, whether he had enough decent health care, or have decent education for his son. Throughout 70 years of the glorious reign, His Majesty King Bumi the Great did this consistently and went a long way to make Thailand a better place on earth. Look at the body language in this picture here. This young boy, bewildered looking, trying to make sense of what his father saying to this man. His Majesty must also remember he was also like this when he was a young boy, sitting in the lap of his father, trying to make sense of what the man who he was looking at. Unfortunately, not, not long after this picture was taken, His Majesty was often. Prince Mahidon passed away in 1929 at the age of not even 38. But throughout his way too short of a noble of a life, he served faithfully in his profession, being a medical doctor. In his last year of life, he served at the McCormick, McCormick Hospital in Chiang Mai. Back then it was a rural area. McCormick Hospital was a missionary run unit at a bottom rung of the Thai public health system. But here the doctor was treating the poor patients. They remember him walking around at night holding the lanterns, visiting the, doctor, the patients, doing menial work cleaning the, these poor people as a rural doctor is supposed to do. But he was the king of he was the son of King Churangkorn the Great. But it doesn't matter. He served the people. They gave him the name, the Doctor Prince, Mao Jiao Fa, a term of respect and endearment. And that spirit of public service has imbued and energized the culture of public service that has made Thai public health system exemplary by any standard of excellence in the world. Prince Mahidon, the very namesake of the award that over the past 30 years annually has recognized contribution towards advancement in medicine and public health service. And so the very namesake of this conference today, Prince Maidon Award Conference. That draw people from 90 countries around the world to come here to remember with respect and with gratitude the Dr. Prince who gave his all in the service of his people. I am deeply honored and very grateful to have the opportunity to address this distinguished congregation. Thank you very much. <laughs>